Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. Today I'm starting a new segment called VR Refactor or Refactor. I wanted to call it VRify, but that name was taken, so Refactor. Anyway, the point of this segment is that often you have uh, free or open source products on GitHub, you know, repositories, whatever, and they're 3D, but they're not VR and maybe you want to convert that to VR. So I'm going to show you how to convert the Nature Starter Kit 2 asset in the Unity Asset Store to Steam VR. And later in the segment, in other videos, we'll do, we'll do other things as well. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to grab the Steam VR plugin. Okay, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab the Nature Starter Kit. Now, I'm going to make a GitHub uh, public repository with all of this, but I can't include the Steam VR plugin or the Nature Starter Kit plugin in the repository by default because even though they're free, they're not necessarily open source. Um, I think Steam VR is open source, but I don't think the Nature Starter Kit is. So when you go and load this up in the GitHub repository, um, you just have to re-import the assets. Okay, so now we have our Nature Starter Kit. And the first thing that we can do here is we can take the scene, the default scene, and we're gonna load that up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save that as my other scene, my example scene. Okay, now the first thing that you need to do to VRify or refactor something is uh, if you're using Steam VR, you've got to pull in the camera rig. So we're going to go to prefabs and we're going to grab that camera rig and put it in the scene. And that creates this nice little camera rig right here. And then we're going to, you can either disable the main camera or you can delete it. I'm going to go ahead and delete it at this point. And let me make sure that my Steam VR is up and running. Okay, we have our Steam VR up and running now. Got my controllers. So let's see here. We'll set to maximize on play here. All right, there we go. We're in the scene. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that the grass turns as we turn our headset. That's called billboarding. And we want to turn that off because that's crazy. So we're going to do that. Okay, and there are two terrains here. Um, only one of them has the grass. The other one has other objects. And you can tell which terrain has what by disabling it and re-enabling it. So this terrain appears to have the background objects mostly. And then this terrain has the grass. So I'm going to highlight each one of these grasses individually and edit details and edit. And then I'm going to turn off billboarding. Click apply, next grass, edit details, edit, turn off billboarding, click apply. Okay, and now let's see what happens when we start our game. Oh, we can see immediately that the grass is no longer billboarding. It's waving a bit in the in the wind. Pretty nice overall. Now, the trees in the background are still billboarding. You can see them still moving around. I haven't actually found a solution for that. So what I do is I just turn off that second terrain. Um, you can try to change the distance. There's a billboarding distance, I believe. Where is it? Yeah. Billboard start 50. I don't remember if this actually did any good, though. Let's, let's try it when we increase that distance. Yeah. That does actually work. It seems to have a pretty negative impact on the performance, though. 
Uh, you can see my FPS indicator is now 31 FPS. And let's turn that back down to 50. 55 is fine. Yeah, you can see my FPS is back up to like 100. So, eh, doesn't really help much if you lose your performance. So there may be a better solution here, but what I usually do is I just turn it off. And now you get pretty decent performance. You just don't see those trees in the background. Pretty cool. Okay, now one thing that you can do if you're having trouble with performance, uh, I have a 1080 Ti, so it's a fairly beefy card. Um, what, one thing that you can do to tweak the performance settings is you can go to project settings, I think it's quality. I'm on ultra right now. You can lower that down to one of the other quality settings if you want to. And you can see as you do that, it changes the way the scene is rendered. Uh, so for example, in the low quality setting, our texture quality is full res, but our shadows are disabled. You can go up to medium, uh, and now you get some shadows, ultra, you get hard and soft shadows. Let's see, one other thing that we could do is we could add a mirror to the scene. And this would be useful if we had a character, for example. So uh, in SteamVR, the way you do a mirror is uh, there's something called the Stereo Rendering plugin. Vive Stereo Rendering Toolkit. And you can import that. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm trying to remember how I do this. Uh, I think to make a mirror, what you do is you go to 3D Object Plane. And then you can rotate that say 90 degrees. Get it right about there. Raise it up a little bit maybe. Maybe scale it down a tad. It's a little big. That's pretty good. And I think what you can do is you can add a Stereo renderer. You check the is mirror box. And then I'm not sure if there's any more to it than that or not. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. You'll notice that our frame rate has now dropped down pretty significantly. So I've noticed that whenever I have a, a mirror in the scene, I usually have to lower my quality settings quite a bit. Let's try medium, see what that does. Still gives you some shadow detail. There we go. Pretty good. I saw a little dip below, below 80 FPS there, but pretty decent. Now, you will notice that the lighting is a little weird in the mirror. Let's see if we can fix that next. So let's see. Uh, this Nature Starter Kit comes with a, an environmental light that's an HDR light. And they have it set to blue which is a little weird. Let's try setting that to white. Right about there looks pretty good. Let's see what that does. There we go. That's a little better. And one thing that I've found is if, if the scene in the mirror looks to be blown out, let's see if I can see my controllers there yeah if the scene in the mirror is blown 
Uh, if it's very, very bright compared to the rest of the scene, um, try making sure that you don't have any directional lights pointed at it. For example, I think if I move this mirror back here and I flip it around 180 degrees, I believe it will be a little blown out. Yeah, look at how different those colors are. And, and the reason for that is because there's a directional light pointing at the mirror. So I believe it is this light here. You can see how it's kind of pointed in the direction of the mirror. If we rotate this, let's go maybe 120. Try that. There we go. So now our, our mirror is not blown out. So that's just something to be aware of if you're, uh, if you're doing something like that. I show you this mirror simply because I use this in my uh, VR IK demo. Um, if you have a human, humanoid character uh, in your scene, it might be useful to have a mirror in the scene as well, especially if you're testing out IK stuff. Let's see what happens if we go to high quality. Still decent FPS at high quality. It dips down to, oh, there we go. It dips down to like 40 or 30 right there, which is bad. So you can't really go below medium when you've got a mirror that large in the scene. Even that dips down a little bit. Now, I could stop the demo right there, but I, I read that um, NVIDIA or Unity uh, announced the VRWorks SDK in 2017-1, and we're running that. So I'm kind of curious if VRWorks can improve our frame rate here. So let's try using this. Let's just try hitting play and see what happens. I don't think it's quite that easy, but we'll see. Yeah, seems to be getting about the same performance, a little weird. And I'm not seeing VR works in the console, so that makes me think that it's not enabled yet. Okay, so it says VRWorks plugin comes with two C Sharp scripts, VRWorks and VRWorks present, located in Assets, Plugins, VRWorks, Scripts folder. Both of these scripts need to be attached to the main camera in order for VRWorks to work properly. So let's uh, go ahead and attach those. I believe the eye is the main ca camera. So let's see, VRWorks and VRWorks present. Okay, and then let's try that. Still seeing frame rate drops. Not supported or plugin was, was not initialized properly. If you just started a new project, please restart Unity. Okay, so let's try saving that and we will restart Unity. And I'm going to turn off Maximize on Play so that I can watch the console log. Hey, there we go. MRS, SPS, LMS detected. Still seeing a drop down to 52 FPS but the plugin is working at this point. As we already mentioned, scripting language is used to toggle VRWorks features as needed. Valid features include multi-resolution shading, single pass, and lens match shading. I'm most interested in the lens match shading right now because I'm on a Pascal architecture GPU. Note that single pass stereo should not be confused with Unity's single pass stereo mode. VRWorks single pass stereo is a hardware feature on Pascal or new, newer GPUs. 
Cool. I was, I was wondering about that. We might take a, a further in-depth look at this in the future, but uh, I just wanted to show off the scene. I've been using this scene a lot in um, some of my videos, and I think it's a fairly attractive scene, and I thought I would show you how to refactor it. All right. I hope you found this video interesting or useful. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button down below. Down in the description of the video, we have a link to the GitHub project so that you can check that out. Also, we have a link to our Patreon page down there. If you enjoy this content and you want to see more of it, please consider becoming a patron. As always, thanks for watching and please subscribe.